Okay, welcome back to Your Regina 120. I'm Jeff Kleck. Uh, this is a series of videos of things that I learned over the course of my uh, computer science degree at the University of Regina uh, that I think that you should know. Uh, today we're going to be talking about all of the data, uh, as the meme uh, behind me kind of goes. Um, we're the, the goal here is to uh, basically look at two senses in which we could use uh, all the data, and, and we'll get into the, the specifics here in a bit. Uh, but the, the two senses are going to be, one, when you're either at the beginning or kind of working your way through a problem. This is usually a math problem, but not necessarily. Um, specifically, a word problem is the most common uh, place where you'll encounter this. Uh, and then the other is at the end of a problem. We'll start with the, the beginning of a problem, because that's probably the, uh, the more uh, e easiest way to get into it. So the, 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 the basic idea here is that you should really strive to use all of the data provided in the question. And I'll put an asterisk there uh, for later uh, discussion, but uh, if you're given a question, whether it's on an exam, uh, on your homework, on your, you know, just day-to-day -day work through the textbook, whatever it is you're doing, uh, if they give you some information in the question, that's a really good suggestion that it's probably relevant to your answer. And so especially constraints. If they give you constraints in the question, you should really pay attention to those constraints and make sure that when you get an answer, that your answer at least is aware of or informed by or uses those constraints uh, and it's that you don't basically ignore anything. Uh, same thing if you're doing a proof. If you're, if you're proving something, whether in you know, the, the, the strictest sense of the term, in logic or math, or even in more general sense, uh, did you use the whole hypothesis? Did, of the things that you assumed at the beginning of the proof, did you actually use them all? Did you use everything that you had in front of you to begin with? You know, you're putting together something from Ikea. Did you use all of the pieces that came with that thing? You know, you're, you're, you, you take something apart. You're, if your goal is to put it back together again, did you use all the pieces that you took apart, or is there a screw or a nut still left? This is the, the question that you should be asking of yourself when you're problem solving, when you're doing things, uh, or doing work, or homework, or exam. And uh, specifically for proofs. If you're doing proofs, Really, if, if you don't, if you've never done proofs, if you, if you don't really know how proofs work, you can kind of, to a first order approximation, kind of imagine uh, that all a proof really is is just looking at your hypotheses or, or, or the, the, your assumptions or your axioms, and then making sure that if you assumed it or if you included it in your the beginning of your proof, that you actually did use it and that you used it properly. If you can do that and find your way to a conclusion. That's practically a proof. Uh, there's not that much more to it. Um, this uh, is helpful in some cases because, um, or you going back and, and forcing yourself to look at all of the data uh, is helpful because sometimes you can come across something that works basically very much like a puzzle where you have most of the solution in your head, but you're having trouble finding the rest of the solution. But you you pick something else up and you you kind of force your, yourself to look at it and, and your brain will automatically try to fit it into where the, you know, the, the answer could be using that particular piece of information. Of course, sometimes that particular information is not the key to the answer. However, uh, sometimes it is. And it's worth you know, going through the effort and actually trying to do this. And uh, so sometimes just noticing that um, your, your, your data hasn't been used isn't enough. You actually have to kind of focus on it and try to use it itself. So uh, it, 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 in that sense, it's kind of a brain hack or a mind hack. You can, you can, you can force yourself to, to kind of treat things that don't necessarily seem like puzzles as puzzles. You can force yourself to look at data and to try to see how you could integrate it into your solution uh, and kind of trick yourself to do it that way. And so the, that, that's the, the sense of using all of the data uh, in, in the current, you know, in, in the ongoing problem solving uh, process or, or in the middle of the process. But there's also a sense that you could do so at the end of the process. And so that, you know, you, you do the, the homework problem or the exam problem, you have extra time because you're always bound by time. You know, 
going to always have to make these trade-offs about time. But if you, if you do have the time, uh, sometimes it's fruitful to ask yourself, you know, even if you have the solution that fulfills the assignment or whatever, uh, could you take it another step further? Do you, of the data that you have, can you learn anything else from it? Maybe you can make your, your answer to your question a little bit more specific. You can uh, maybe say that it's valid for everything except for x equals 1 or something like that. You, you can, uh, or, or, or it's valid in some number systems, if you've, if you've studied multiple number systems. You can, you can learn about uh, the, the, the various cases in which things are valid, or, or even discover and, and find new ways of the, that things are valid, and so on. Uh, but, but in general, it depends what kind of data you have as far as what you can kind of learn or, or, or grab from it. Uh, but almost always, by the time you're at the end of a, a problem or a question, your, your, your kind of default natural instinct is to kind of throw away all the data that you had except for the answer. You kind of keep the answer and then, you know, give the answer to the teacher or the, the exam or whatever, and then that's just it. Well, sometimes the information that in the question itself can be valuable, or the, the, the calculations that you've done, the things that you've generated, the things about the problem you've learned, the things about the problem space you've learned, all of these things can be valuable. You don't have to necessarily throw them away. And you can sometimes even learn new things from them that you wouldn't normally have a chance to learn otherwise. Um, and so there's, there's that as well. The other thing that you can do is that you can use the things that you're, you're, you're using uh, as, as yet another way to double check your work. So if you, if you look at the constraints in your original problem, and you look at the things that the problem gave you, you can kind of double check every single bit of information, every single bit of data, everything that they gave you against not only your answer, but the way that you solved the problem. So it, it's kind of like a, a, a path of different paths that you can take uh, to, to get to your problem, see if you can get to that or get to that answer. See if you can get to that answer from multiple directions, uh, especially for non-trivial problems. Uh, if you've, you know, really struggled with a problem and gotten to the end of the problem, by the time that you're at that end of that problem, you have an appreciation and an understanding of the problem and the kinds of problems that that is an instance of that you did not have when you started that problem. And so, when you finish the problem, you can go back without the stress, without the, the, the pressure of having to find the answer and relook at that data and see if there's anything interesting in it that you can learn from. This puts you kind of a step up above your fellow students who are not doing this. This gives you a way to benefit from the data you know, and benefit from the questions and benefit from your own work in a way that you may not expect uh, or other others may not expect is even possible. So this is something you should probably be doing if you have the time. Uh, for pretty much all the time when you get the chance. And now, now I'm going to get to that little uh, asterisk that I pointed out earlier, that sometimes uh, questions will be given to you with extra information to throw you off on purpose. Uh, and sometimes in, you know, outside of the academic world, when you're dealing with practical problems and, and problems where you're actually having to deal with raw data from the outside world, empirical data, you, you know, the, the data isn't all, or it's not always clear what is the meaningful data for the you know, particular thing you're trying to do. In each of these two cases, this is, you know, you may not want to necessarily use all of the data because you'll get bogged down, you know, in the latter case with all sorts of data and trying to figure out how it all fits together, which again, can be fruitful if you can do, but you may not always be able to do. And in the former case, I, when the, you know, assignment or homework is just trying to catch you off guard, you know, you can get confused and it, it may kind of trick you up a little bit. But it shouldn't trick you up that much. Even if you are given misleading information and you can't find a, a way to, to get it into your solution, don't fret, you know, as long as you stay within the, the valid rules of reasoning and the rules of math and your, 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 the things that you've learned how to do properly, you still should be okay. Uh, but it's, it's worth looking at them, seeing if you can integrate it into a, a deeper solution to your problem, even in that case. So again, there, there are some uh, things to be wary of, but in general, it's something to do. You get a little bit more bang for your buck on the questions that you're doing, the work you're already doing, and see if you can use that to, to become better at what you're trying to become and uh, to learn more quicker. So um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, again, this is you read John at 120. If you have any questions, uh, you know, feel free to, uh, as usual, comment in any comment thread I post up. 
Uh, and uh, but before I go, I'm going to give a final example and erase this nice meme on the whiteboard. Before I forget, the example given, uh, and I'll talk a little bit about more where this example came from next, uh, is if you're trying to calculate And if you don't follow this entire proof, that's okay. You know, if you haven't gotten far enough into geometry to really understand what's going on, uh, don't feel too bad. The important stuff is before this particular part of this video, but you should be able to follow along in either case. So, uh, the goal here in this parallel pipette, if I'm pronouncing that right, basically a rectangle um, extended in uh, the third dimension, uh, just as a cube might be uh, if it was all squares. Um, and we want to find out the distance from this point, at the, this end corner here, to this point at the front corner. And so I'm going to kind of skip ahead a little bit uh, to the point where most people can get to the point where if they get as far as realizing there are right angle triangles involved, that there's this right angle triangle between this vertical side A, this horizontal side B, uh, with the length from the Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared all under square root. And then where this use all the data would come in handy here is you then point out to the person who's trying to solve this problem, but you have this C here. You haven't done anything with C. You haven't done anything with this third dimension. Can you use this value? Can you use this information? The fact that you have unintegrated information in your question. If you have, you know, you haven't done anything with C, you haven't done anything to integrate this into your answer, uh, what could you do with that? Uh, not everyone's going to be able to take the next step. But you could look at that C and notice that that C is basically touching the line here that you have, or the segment here, that you have found the length of. And so you have two sides of a triangle that you know the lengths of. And it turns out But that is actually part of a plane. And I'm not going to go through the proof of proving that it's a right angle triangle, but if you take uh, it from me, that it is in fact a right angle triangle, if you can prove that far, then again, from the Pythagorean theorem, c squared plus the square root of a squared plus b squared is equal to this length. And if you just run the numbers, you'll notice that c squared plus, well this is just a squared plus b squared square root squared, which is just a squared plus b squared, is equal to this k squared. So if if that's the case, then k is just the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. So the important part here isn't necessarily the fact that this a squared plus b squared plus c squared uh, square root is the length here. That, that's not really all that important. The important part is that to take the step to get here, to learn that there's a, a c that you have to get into this triangle or into this, this you, know, you have to measure using C. You have to get an answer that utilizes C somehow. That is the step from this far to this far. If you can make that step, the rest, you know, getting to that right angle triangle, you know, if you're if you're doing questions all day involving right angle triangles, chances are you can take that step. If you haven't, it may be another step you may have to learn about geometry a little bit to get to. But again, 
The important part is this is a step that you know you can make. You can do this if you look at this this value and understand the scope of the problem. And if you can't, again, we can you know pick apart the problem in other ways. But hopefully, this is one way that will uh, make things easier for you to solve work problems with. So again, hopefully you enjoyed this video. See you next video.